Warning, now we all know that Santa Claus is real. But if you don't wanna be exposed to a conversation that blatantly states the opposite, do not watch this episode, okay? Do something else right now, click away, seriously. Okay, now that we've got that out of the way, why is Santa fat? Really? Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. All right, open up your brains. I'm about to dispense some Santa Claus-ish information right into it. Ho, ho, go. Why is Santa Claus fat? Okay, let's go back to the origins of Santa Claus. A lot of people may already know this. He's loosely based on an actual saint from the year 270 AD. That's when he was born, Saint Nicholas. This guy started his life as a monk and then became the Bishop of Myra. And he was fat, end of story. No. Uh, he, we don't know, we don't know. Uh, he has a little bit of a double chin there, I guess, in his rendering, but you know, he's pretty, pretty skinny guy as far as I can. Got a crease in his neck. He had a reputation for secret gift giving and also doing things like putting coins in the shoes of uh, shoes that were left out for him. I don't know why people were leaving shoes out for him, but he put coins in them. And he also had a reputation for giving away his inherited fortune uh, to children by throwing coins and gifts through their windows. So this dude was just a very jolly, gift-giving guy. He's rendered with a beard here. Saint Nicholas. Saint Nicholas. Now, yeah, okay, you're going the historical route. What, can I just jump to the fact that Santa Claus eats so many cookies on Christmas Eve? How could the dude not be fat? D isn't that really the reason? I'm proud of you, you're applying logic to a situation, Link. That's true, in fact, some scientists calculated that Santa Claus eats about 38 billion calories every Christmas Eve. But that doesn't really answer the question that I think only history can answer is how have we as a society created a fat version yeah, of him? That's right. really what you're getting at. Because Santa's not real. He's just a fictional character. Not hearing it. Okay. Not acknowledging that. Um, so anyway, so then Saint Nick, Saint Nicholas, soon became known as Sinterklaas in the Netherlands, and his legend began, began to spread. Sinterklaas gave gifts every year to well-behaved children, uh, and then, that, so this was sort of the thing that the Dutch were doing, the Sinterklaas. But this, the, this is a role-played legendary yeah, type yeah, this, thing in this, this situation. This is the legend of Sinterklaas okay. kind of spreading. They were celebrating it around Christmas time. Well, then the Dutch, of course, moved across the Atlantic uh, to the New World, and they brought the legend of Santa Claus. At the same time, and here's Santa Claus, by the way. He kind of, he basically just looks like a bishop in the Catholic Church, you know. Now, English immigrants, obviously, too, were crossing the Atlantic Ocean and coming to the New World, and they brought a different legend of Father Christmas with them. This guy didn't give gifts, but he wandered from house to house, feasting with families. A feasting, okay. Yeah, yeah. So he liked to eat. Right. And as you can see, he in a rendering here from the olden times, th he was very much like a wizard of the woods almost, mm -hmm. kind of like the guy from The Lord of the Rings. Radagast? Yeah. But Different guy entirely. As a lot of things happen in America, in any culture where there's a bunch of cultures coming together, these two legends fused. Father Christmas and Santa Claus came together to form they Santa centered. Claus. Okay? And so Santa Claus was first described in 1822 in a story that you all know, "'Twas the Night Before Christmas." And all through the house, you want me to recite it? You, not a you creature can. was stirring, not even a mouse. Mouse, dead mouse in the toilet. Stockings were hung yeah. by the chimney that's, with that's care. That's the Lincoln Saint version. Nicholas soon would be there. He st they still call him Saint Nicholas in the story. Right, but he is introduced there, and it describes him as a portly elf with a sleigh and eight reindeer. So this stuff that you know about Santa Claus when you think of him as being portly, fat, and having a sleigh with reindeer, that came about in 1822 and 12. From that story, and also the flying reindeer? Yes. Huh, came from that story. Well, that, and this is what I'm learning from the internet. This Take it all with a grain of salt, but it, this seems to be the best information that we can find at this point. Of course. So then, in uh, the mid 1800s, 1863, there was an editorial cartoonist named Thomas Nast. This guy is considered the father of the American cartoon. He was writing for Harper's. Father Christmas of the American cartoon? No, just the father. Okay. For Harper's Weekly, a magazine. And he, in 1863, drew Santa Claus right here. And he's a little bit plump, as you can see. This is Santa Claus. Interestingly, he has like a jacket with stars on it. So it's like a weird like 4th of July situation, but that's just because it was like, this is the American Santa Claus. And they got Thomas Nast to come back and draw Santa Claus in, 
you know, year after year, and eventually he came out with this situation right here. This mm, is this trollish. is Santa Claus, but Santa Claus is he got he's bigger. Big. He's he, he actually got bigger year after year. Well, okay. So okay, so we got Santa getting fat, but then Coca Cola just sends it totally over the top. And creates the modern Santa Claus that you think about when you think about Santa Claus in America. Uh, hold on, you're, you're about to tell me that Coca Cola invented the modern Santa Claus. Yes. In 1931, Coca Cola asked illustrator Haddon Sunlum, Sunlum to create a lovable Santa that would embrace children and raid the fridge while drinking Coca Cola. He would go in there and he would sip the Coca Cola that he got from the fridge. Mm -hmm. And he actually used a friend of his, a live model. His friend Lou Prentice, who was a retired salesman, just a retired salesman, that is this dude right here. Just a big, overweight, jolly looking dude with rosy cheeks and a white beard. And he put him. So the real Santa Claus, there's two answers to that it's either St. Nicholas or it's Lou Prentice, a salesman. Well, no, but you gotta understand that this version of Santa Claus, because of what Thomas Nast had drawn, he was in the psych, you know, the the, the psychology of Santa Claus, mm -hmm. people's perception of Santa Claus. So that when Coke came along and said, "Hey, I want to do this," he was thinking about kind of a big dude with a white beard and a coat and everything. But he created this Santa that you know as the Santa. I mean, you look at these Coke ads. I mean, this is the Santa when you go to the mall, you see the Santa that was basically created by this guy. Uh, in 1931, and he kept drawing these until 1964. He also created a very fat belt to hold back the fat belly, and to me, that's the that's the centerpiece of a good Santa Claus, is a belt with a good height to it. Yeah. And so, thank you, Coca Cola, for that. Well, it's got you don't want it to pop. So the question is, okay, so that's why Santa's fat. Santa's fat because the dude decided to, to draw him like that. Now the question is, marketing should. Santa be fat. Do you or do you like your fat Santa, or do you think, hey, it's 2013, it's about to be 2014, and we're health conscious now, and we don't want to celebrate fat Americans. We want to celebrate Americans who are watching their weight, and Santa Claus is one of those. Well, some, well, I, I see this two different ways. You know, if Santa was my granddad, uh, and he was gaining weight every year, I would be like, hey, Pop, why don't you lay off the cookies a little bit? You know, I'm, I'm concerned about your your health, your well being. So that's on one side. But on the other side, you don't want some like robust, fit, trim guy. It's kind of intimidating. You you know, you got someone who's got a jolly belly that shakes when he laughs, the bowl full of jelly type scenario. That's 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 winsome. That's engaging. That's well, that's marketing. It makes me want to drink a coke. <laughs> well, I think it goes beyond that because you think about overweight comedians. Ooh. That you love. Okay, let's. I'm just gonna get real here for a second. You love an overweight comedian, and then that comedian loses weight, and he doesn't seem as charming anymore. Now, good, bad, and different. You're talking about Drew Carey on The Prices, right? Drew Carey is a prime example. Now, good, bad, and different. That is that is a true thing. All of a sudden, the dude doesn't seem as approachable now that he's all fit and trim. But now, he's done something good for himself. He, now he has. But see, we there's a loophole because Santa's not real. Okay. Sorry if I just spoiled it for the kids at home. But uh, Santa isn't real. What? He's a fictional character and he is our one time that we can celebrate somebody who's overweight because there's no actual consequence because he's a fictional character. So of course Santa should be fat. We shouldn't change that. We should make him bigger. He rides in a sleigh. No, 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 he's a role model for kids, man. No, he's not. Nobody what? wants to be like Santa. Uh, since when did people want to be like I Santa? Wanted, I wanted to be Santa for like really a few minutes one time. Maybe. No, you wanted to receive things from big old Santa. Yeah, I never, and that's okay. It's a I wanted loophole. him to be my granddad. I never wanted to be him. Exactly, and you wanted him to be fat, right? Right. Well, maybe if he dies and then he's replaced with a skinny Santa, that would be the best way to do it. Like you know how in comic book characters yeah. they die. Let's kill Santa. Unless you bring back a skinny one. All right. If he loses weight, that's a, that's a good story. You, you know, know what, what time, time it is. is. I'm Ben from North England. It's time to spin the wheel of mythicality. The prize is over our 12 mythical days of Christmas exclusively at facebook.com slash retlink are getting crazy. We were giving away two, one for the last two days of the 12 mythical days of Christmas of the box we used in the promo for GMM. One of a kind, look at this thing. There's no real cereal in it, but there's only two of them in the world. And all the previous prizes. Lost at Sea. Uh, 
Oh, this is great, isn't it? What? What a vacation. No, what? dude, we're, we're lost. It's day 20, 30. It, we're lost at sea for X amount of days, man. I think you're getting delirious. Oh. You smell like a big roast chicken right now. You actually look like one. You're turning into one of those, like used to happen in the cartoons. Really? Either I'm hallucinating or you've turned into a big roast chicken and there's only one way to find out. <clears throat> pretty sure I was hallucinating. No, it's actually pretty good. We were approached right now by Post. We'd love to sell cereal. What would it be? Frosted because Flakes. <laughs> <laughs> Rebrand, just, just pour put it in there. Frosted Flakes in there. 